Another weekend has come and gone. It is once again time to talk those juicy box office numbers. Welcome back to the Adventure Outpost. As always, before we begin these videos, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, drop some comments down below. I want to know what you went out and saw this past weekend. Labor Day weekend, the end of the summer. A slow time here at the box office. If it's nice out, everyone wants to go out and get those last dog days of summer that they can before the school season starts again. And we did not actually do terrible. I thought we were going to have a huge decrease over the previous week, but we're going to start as always like we do with the 2023 box office chart. And if we take a look here, as you can see, for week 34, we managed to stay right on the line. We were 78.9 million as opposed to just 78 the previous week. We had a increase of 1.8 two percent so we'll take that right there it's better than being on that decline again as you can see that we've done over the past few weeks we have just steadily been decreasing ever since we dropped under 100 million back in week 31 but right now i'll take a plateau right there at 78 a plateau right there we will take especially now as we're about to get into those dire days of september and october where we need some surprise hits to come out and keep us afloat until we get to those holiday months but now, let's turn our attention over to the top 10 and see just where everything lied this holiday weekend. And as we take a look right here for the holiday weekend of September 1st to September 4th, the four-day weekend, The Equalizer, the number one movie in America, managed to take number one with $42.2 million off of a $70 million budget. That is very solid and right in line with the other Equalizer movies. As all the other Equalizer movies didn't come out over a four-day weekend, so they came in a little under for their three-day weekends when they came out, just around $35 million for all those. If you take just the three-day weekend from this past weekend, the Equalizer 3, right on the money with that. The first one, I think, still the highest grossing one out of the three, but this one right online with the others. Nice, modest budget right there is going to help make these movies be a nice little big hit for them. That's a modest-sized like little win for them right there. So they can keep making some money hand over fist week over week. They're going to get themselves a nice little piece of cheddar right there. In second place, we got Barbie in its seventh week. Drops 32.5%, takes in $13 million to bring its total domestic haul to $612 million off of a $145 million budget. Absolutely absurd. We're going to have a lot more to talk about with that number in just a moment. In third place, we've got Blue Beetle in its third week. Drops 41.5%, takes in $9 million to bring its total domestic haul to $58 million off of a $104 million budget. So still a bit of a ways to go for that movie to find itself in the green right here at least worldwide, it's going to make itself back a little bit of budget. But here domestically, it's struggling to hit that initial budget. In fourth place, a huge drop from the previous week. It was number one in the theaters last weekend. This weekend drops all the way down the fourth place already. Is Gran Turismo in its second week drops 62.3%. That is troubling. Takes in $8 million, brings total domestic call to $30 million off of a $60 million budget. So this movie also has a bit of a ways left to go if it wants to see it get back its initial budget, at least here domestically. I hope it does it. This was a solid movie. I actually just got back from seeing it right before I made this video and I really enjoyed it. It's a solid mid-budget hit right there. It deserves to get itself a little bit of an audience, it deserves to have that be a nice modest budget hit. So hopefully week over week it could sustain just enough to put itself right over that initial budget, make itself at least a little bit of money there. And rounding out the top five is Oppenheimer. In its seventh week, it drops 31%, takes in $7.5 million to bring its total domestic hold to $310 million off of a $100 million budget. Just an absolute phenomenal, phenomenal performance from this film. We take a look over on the back five. We've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem in the sixth place in its fifth week. Drops 36.2%, takes in $6 million to bring its total domestic hold to $107 million off of a $70 million budget. Manages this past weekend to cross the $100 million blockbuster status line right there. We're going to take a look at that total in just a little bit, but a huge win right there for TMNT. In seventh place, debuting here is Bottoms in its second week. It gets into more of a wide release here, which is why we see such a huge increase, plus 561.1% last week. It was a limited release this week, opens up much wider, enough to give itself 3.6 million off of a 
to bring its total domestic call to four million. I'm sorry, off of eleven million dollar budget. So still a bit of a ways as well for this movie to make itself some money back. But at least that low budget right there should ensure that it might be able to limp itself over the finish line, depending on how much wider this release ends up being and positive word of mouth. In eighth place, we've got Meg 2, The Trench, in its fifth week, drops 41.3%, takes in $3.6 million to bring its total domestic call to $79 million of a $140 million budget. Internationally and worldwide, this movie is doing very well for itself, that it is already well past its initial budget. But here domestically, this movie is not sniffing up to par along with its predecessor, just barely about to pass 80 million here, has a long ways to go to pass that initial budget, does not look like it's going to do it here domestically at least, doesn't even look like it's going to pass the blockbuster status line here domestically. So just a sad performance here domestically for the Meg 2. In ninth place is Strays, and third in its third week drops 48.3%, takes in $3.2 million to bring its total domestic call to $21 million off of a $46 million budget. Bit of a ways to go for this movie. I don't see it happening. This movie is falling off of a cliff, as it should, because it is one of the worst movies to come out this year. Just a sad performance from this film all around. And rounding us out in the top 10, joining us back in the top 10 again. Last week it bowed out, but it is back again for another week. Is Talk to Me, and its sixth week drops 22.9%, takes in $2 million to bring its total domestic to $44 million off of a $5 million budget. As always, we like to take a look at our fallen heroes here. These are our heroes that did their time in the top 10, but have bowed out for greener passages. We have three movies this week that have bowed out of the top 10. After one week on the chart, The Hill and Retribution both bow out, enjoying just seven solitary days here in the top 10. And after five weeks on the chart, The Haunted Mansion did what it could, but did not have enough in it to make itself a little bit of a dent here. It bows out now after five weeks. They did their time. They had their say. But now it's time to bid adieu to them, and we will see them in the realm of physical media. And as always, we salute you. Now we turn our attention to that big, huge domestic earning of the Barbie movie, $612 million. That is a huge, huge tally right there, and it is enough to put it at number 13 for the highest domestic grocers of all time. Now, we were wondering, would this movie be able to cross $600 million a few weeks ago we were talking about? I thought it would at least cross $600 million, but I did not think it was going to have enough in it to cross The Incredibles. How wrong I was. This movie still has enough left in the tank here. As you can see, it has flown past The Incredibles at this point sits now at 612 million dollars ahead of the Incredibles 2 it's 608 million the question now is how much more does this movie have in the tank domestically how high is this movie going to rise it does not have that much left to pass Star Wars Episode 8 The Last Jedi in the 12th spot sits right now at 620 million it's entirely possible that it could pass this movie especially right now we're getting into September there's not much coming out right now this movie is doing well it's about to have an IMAX release too in September. There is all possibilities that there is still some just money to be made left in the tank for this movie. I can see it passing Star Wars The Last Jedi. I could even see it passing the number 11th spot right now, which is The Avengers, with $623 million. The question will be is does it have enough in it to pass Jurassic World, which is the number 10th one, which I think sits right now around 650, which is a bit of a reach right now. That's a lot for it to make up right now, to breach into the top 10, to pass Jurassic World, to get into that like elite top 10. But I wouldn't put it past Barbie. This movie has shown that the demand is there, the people are there, and it all remains to be seen just how good of its performance this IMAX is going to be. Is that going to be enough to get people to come back and want to go and see this movie again, to see it on this huge premium format? I think it's possible, but we're going to have to wait and see and see what it does. But for right now, just an absolutely phenomenally stellar performance by Barbie. We turn our attention over to the top 10 worldwide for 2023. We have a new champion. Barbie has made enough worldwide to overtake the Super Mario Brothers to be the highest grossing movie of the year. It sits right now in the first spot at $1.383 billion. I don't see any other movie getting anywhere near close to that. So just an absolute huge win for Barbie right there. In second place is the Super Mario Brothers movie with $1.359 billion. And in third place right there is Oppenheimer 
summer with $853 million. Now with the rest of this year, all eyes turn to see what left of the superhero movies are going to be able to pull out in the Marvels and Aquaman 2. But if they do not have enough to get over $853 million right there to pass Oppenheimer, this is going to be the first time since like, I think 2001 that we're going to have a top three that wasn't, that were all just original properties. And I know that's a bit of a caveat because obviously Barbie has a tied in audience and that it has this huge conglomerate of toys and direct to video stuff. And same with Super Mario Brothers. There's a long history of video games and tie ins and all this stuff. But this is the first time really that it's ever gotten its due here in a feature length film on the big screen like this. So this is huge, huge at the box office. So we're going to get into a top time here where we're going to finish the year without a superhero movie being in the top three. That is huge. That might finally be a sign of the changing of the guard. Super, the superhero genre has held captive on that box office for a long time now, and it might finally be just moving past it. We might finally be looking to see more original ideas and original properties that haven't been mined to death show up here in the box office as doing phenomenal jobs. And I, for one, couldn't be happier about it. Everybody knows I'm not the biggest superhero fan. I don't hate them. I enjoy them. They're perfectly fine, fun entertainment, but I just, they're not my huge cup of tea. They're not what I go to when I want to see a movie. I'm much more in line with an Oppenheimer or something more original. So it's going to be interesting and fun to see what new movies shape the course of the box office going forward. Now, we'll continue on. In fourth place, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 with $845 million. That is the superhero movie to beat this year. Rounding out the top five is Fast X with $704 million. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse in sixth spot with $689 million. We got Full River Red with six hundred and seventy-three. The Wandering Earth Two with six hundred and four. Little Mermaid in ninth spot with five hundred and sixty-nine. And rounding us out in the tenth spot, holding on for dear life right now, is Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One with five hundred and sixty million dollars. We turn our attention over to the domestic front where Barbie has also overtaken Mario here. I believe it did that a few weeks ago. We had already known that it destroyed it domestically. It joined it worldwide for just absolute complete dominance now. Barbie sits in first spot with $612 million. Super Mario Brothers right behind it with $574. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse with $381. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 with $358. Oppenheimer with 310, The Little Mermaid with 298 million, Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania with 214 million, John Wick Chapter 4 with 187 million, Sound of Freedom with 181 million, and rounding out the top 10 is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny with 174 million dollars. Now, we talked before about TMNT crossing that blockbuster threshold. So now we take our attention and we turn now to our 2023 blockbuster status chart. These are all of our movies domestically that we're able to pass the $100 million barrier to become blockbuster status movies, regardless of how they ended up being in their full theatrical run, whether they were a box office bomb or not, they managed to pass the coveted $100 million mark to be considered blockbuster status. We take a look here at this chart. Now, we already went through the first in the top 10 Barbie through Indiana Jones, but rounding us out right outside that top 10 is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning with 170, Transformers Rise of the Beast with 157, Creed 3 with 156, Elemental with 153, Fast X with 145, Scream 6 with 108.1, The Flash right behind that at 108, and joining it now is TMNT Mutant Mayhem at 107. And if you look at it right now and count them up, 18 movies right now have grossed $100 million here domestically in 2023. We are tied for our 2022 blockbuster status that they did for the entire year right now. We are tied and about to pass it. We are at 18 right now. We just need one more movie to pass 100 million for us to be ahead of 2022 and just on our other races to be another big, huge win here at the box office. I'm sure we're going to get there. There's, I'm sure there's one or two more movies that are going to be able to pull it out. We don't know what other hits are. We know Taylor Swift is certainly going to do it in October. The question is, is which actual movies are going to be able to do it with Dune out of the way now. Uh, the Marvel certainly is going to join that party. Will Aquaman 2 be able to join that party? We've also got the Hunger Games prequel in there. The Disney Wish coming out Thanksgiving weekend. So we are healthily, healthily on the way. That's not a word I know, but I'm making it one. 
on the way to having a huge blockbuster status win here for 2023. As long as we continue on the uptick and we pass our previous years, we are doing a good job. And now last but certainly not least, we take a look at my favorite chart here at the box office that we love to talk about week over week, and that is our top 10 chart riders. These are charting along with the movies to see what at the end of the year is going to have the best legs week over week. What at the end of the year do we see for 2023 just absolutely destroyed and had the best weeks here at the box office. We take a look here at the chart, as you can see, in first place, Avatar The Way of Water locked in at 12 weeks. I don't think anything is touching that. It is just out of control that we're going to be in a year um, where the two highest chart riders for the year are holdover movies from 2022. But it just goes to show how big of a performance Avatar The Way of Water and Puss in Boots The Last Wish both put in this year. Avatar with 12 weeks, Puss in Boots with 11. The Super Mario Brothers locked in right now at 10 weeks, the only 2023 movie to hit double digits here to be in the top 10 for 10 weeks or more. Right behind that, locked in at nine weeks, we've got John Wick Chapter 4, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Right behind that, locked in at eight weeks of pieces, A Man Called Otto, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Amongst Thieves, The Little Mermaid, and Elemental. And two movies right now, the only two that I think left for this year that have a shot of getting up there, hitting double digits, and maybe taking a run for the gold and silver and bronze is Barbie and Oppenheimer, which are both right now have been in the top 10 for seven weeks, and they have not dropped out of the top five for those entire seven weeks. So we are doing well right now. We are well on the course for Barbie and Oppenheimer to join Super Mario Brothers in those double digits and take a run at that top prize. Who will do it? Will either of them be able to do it? Remains to be seen, but that's the beauty of watching this week over week is seeing these movies battle it out. Locked in at seven weeks, right behind that is Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Transformers, Rise of the Beasts, and Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And right behind that, locked in at six weeks, we have Scream 6, Creed 3, Jesus Revolution, Megan, Missing, Air, Evil Dead Rise, Sound of Freedom, and Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1. Right behind that, all having been in the top 10 for five weeks right now is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, Meg to the Trench, and Talk to Me the previous week. Talk to Me was locked in at four weeks, but managed to pop back into the top 10 for another week. So now it gets to join the five-week boys, which is crazy that this movie managed to pop back in there. Will it have another week in it to get up to six, or is it going to dip back out again and lock in now with our five-week movies, which round out the top 10 at 80 for Brady, Cocaine Bear, Fast X, No Hard Feelings, and Haunted Mansion now joins the Locked In 5-Week Boys. And that'll do it for all of our charts here this week. It was a nice, quiet weekend here for Labor Day. We managed to hold a nice plateau here at the box office in the top 10. All eyes now turn to this upcoming week and September in general. We are now in one of the quietest months of the year, especially here at the box office. So all eyes are going to be for any movie to be able to surprise and just pull out a nice box office win to keep us moving along until we get to those holiday weekends. This upcoming week, we have the release of the movies The Nun 2 and My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. My Big Fat Greek Wedding, both of the previous movies have managed to be a nice, modest hit here at the box office. The first one was a runaway hit that just continued to make money and have fantastic legs. Will this movie be able to do much in the same and help light up the box office here in the fall? Will The Nun be able to buck the, ho the horror trend of having a huge opening weekend and then completely dying off afterwards. All that remains to be seen. We're all going to keep charting along with it. These are the questions we have to ask for ourselves this upcoming weekend. It is going to be a fantastic weekend to keep charting along right here. And as always, we'd like to end with guessing what our top five will be for next weekend. I think we're going to see the Nun 2 take number one. I think we're going to see the Equalizer 3 hold on to number two. Barbie is going to drop to number three. I think Blue Beetle is going to hang out in number four. Gran Turismo is getting out of there. It's not hanging out in the top five anymore. I think Oppenheimer is going to hold on to the fifth spot. If not, then I think that fifth spot will be my Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. It all remains to be seen for that movie, just how wide of its release it is and how well they're able to get good word of mouth to get people into theaters to see it. It has been a long time since the second one. It's been a long time in between all three of these movies from my Big Fat Greek Wedding, so I don't know if the demand is still quite there to have that huge opening weekend. But we'll be here next weekend to chart along and see just how well these movies do. As always, you have been you. 
I have been me. These are the movies that we love to talk about so much. And until next time, I'll see you at the movies.